Hi guys, hello, welcome back. Today's video is very exciting. I'm gonna be sharing with you every single book that I read in 2021. I read 30 books this year and I know that's not like a ton compared to some other like book YouTubers or book talkers, but I only really started getting back into reading in May of this year. So I only was really super into reading for the second half of the year. Still 30 great books I'm gonna tell you about. And I picked out my top three, so when I get to those, I'll let you know which my top three books are because I just feel like you need to read those. I love them so much. I'm just going to get into this video because I know it's going to be a long one. Get a snack, settle in, let's just spend the next little bit talking about books. <laughs> the first book that started this all is The Summer I Turned Pretty by Jenny Han. This is actually the first book in a trilogy, so there's The Summer I Turned Pretty, it's not summer without you and we'll always have summer those are the three books this series basically follows belly she is the main character her her mom and her brother go up to her mom's best friends like summer house or cottage every summer and her mom has two sons jeremiah and conrad so basically the series is a bit of a love triangle between belly and the brothers i don't want to give away too many details but i highly recommend this this is just like the perfect cute summer read rated i think this whole series four out of five stars which is definitely a good rating for me great book great series love it i do want to say for all of these books definitely look up any trigger warnings or anything because some of these books do deal with more sensitive topics i don't want to say exactly which for each of them because some of them are spoilers so with any of these books, definitely, if you are sensitive to certain topics, look that up just to be safe. So, just wanted to say that. So, those are the three books I read in May. Now, let's get into June. I read a ton in June. The first five books I read are all part of a series, and that is the After series. I don't have the physical books for any of these. I read them all on my Kindle, but this series gets mixed opinions. Some people love it, some people hate it. I will say if you've seen the movies, the books are definitely better. <laughs> I'm gonna say I really enjoyed reading these books. I read the first five books and keep in mind, these books are like fat. Like some of them, like After We Fell is like 600-ish pages, I wanna say, 700 pages, and the other books are like around 500 pages each. So I read all of that in like the first two and a half weeks of June. So basically the first book in the series after takes place right as Tessa Young is moving out to college and when she's there she meets this boy named Hardin and the series is basically just about them and their romance. They definitely have a very toxic on and off relationship but these books are just very entertaining, they're kind of addicting. I really enjoyed them so I know people have mixed opinions. I liked these books, I feel like they're just gonna be kind of like a comfort series for me, so I think I gave the overall series 4 out of 5 stars. That was the After series, that consists of After, After We Collided, After We Fell, After Ever Happy, and then Before. So then after that, I decided to read a standalone, because so far I'd only been doing series. So I decided to read The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. This also, the movie for this book just came out. I really, really enjoyed the movie. I feel like it did a decent job portraying the book. So, so this is an enemies to lovers workplace romance. It follows Joshua Templeman and Lucy Hutton and they both work in the same office and they've never really gotten along. They're always kind of competing, they're rivals. A new job opening opens up and so they're both competing for the same promotion. You see them go from competing and not really liking each other and and then slowly you can see them start to warm up to each other. Typical enemies to lovers trope, but I just thought it was really good, super entertaining. I gave it four to five stars. Then after that, I decided to read The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This is another enemies to lovers book. I also gave four to five stars. I promise not every book in this video will be four to five stars. This follows Olive and Ethan, who are the best man and maid of honor at a wedding, and they've never really gotten along. They don't really like each other, but when everyone else at the wedding, including the bride and groom, get food poisoning, they are told like, hey, you guys should take these tickets and go on the honeymoon. We can't get a refund. We don't want it to go to waste. So they end up going. Certain things occur that make them have to like actually pretend that they're on their honeymoon, so you get that fake dating trope. Overall, it was just like a super cute fun book and of course like super summery. I definitely enjoyed reading it in the summer but I feel like it also could be a good book if it's like the dead of winter and you just want some summer vacation vibes then you totally get that in this book. After that I decided to read Serenading Heartbreak by Ella Field. I think I gave it four out of five stars but like maybe like 4.2. The main character in this book is Stevie and this book starts when I think they're they're pretty young. I want to say high school. I don't 
for sure remember because it's been a bit since I read it but this book follows Stevie and in the first half of the book you kind of see her relationship with her brother's best friend Everett and so you kind of have their like forbidden romance because he is her brother's best friend and they don't want him to find out but then his band since Everett and her brother are in a band they go on tour so he kind of leaves he cuts contact with her he goes off to college and meets this other guy named Aiden so you get to see their relationship too and then Everett kind of ends up coming back in her life. So it is kind of a love triangle, which I know pe some people don't really like, but I feel like this one was done really well. I really enjoyed it. So that's everything that I read in June. Now we'll go into July. So I started off July with a very popular book talk book, and that is Beach Read by Emily Henry. Emily Henry's books are very popular at the moment, definitely for good reason. This book, I gave four to five stars. I know some people may be mad at that because a lot of people give her books five stars and they are very, very good. Like I said, four stars is a very good rating for me. So this book follows January Andrews and it takes place right after her dad passes away. So she decides to go up to his house, like beach house that she didn't even really know he had. She just found out about it and she decides to go up there to kind of clear out his stuff, but also to try and find inspiration to write her book. She's an author, but she's been having writer's block. So she's like, I'm gonna go up there try and find some inspiration to write my book. While she's there, she meets her next door neighbor, Augustus Everett, and it turns out they were actually like academic rivals back in college. They are both writers and so they were always competing, but they decide to switch genres to kind of help get over their writer's block. January normally writes romance books and so Augustus decides to give that a try and I think he normally writes like science fiction, so she decides to give that a try. And so she takes him out on these dates to inspire his romance book and then he takes her on these weird like excursions and interviews and it's just a really good book. Now for the first five star book of this video which is also one of the top three I was talking about and that is Heartbones by Colleen Hoover. I feel like this book is not talked about enough like I never hear anyone talking about it but it is so good and I loved it. This book I will say is perfect for summer and I definitely recommend waiting until summer to read it. I mean, you definitely could read it now and you'll still love it. I just feel like it's the perfect beach book and I definitely plan on reading it again this summer. So this book follows Bea and it starts right after her mom passes away. And so she decides to reach out to her dad who she has not seen in a long time and ask to come stay with him. But Bea and her mom were living in poverty and she kind of had, it says on the back, like a life of poverty and neglect. So when she goes to her dad's house, it's like his beach summer house and he is obviously very wealthy and she finds out she actually has a stepsister. And so she ends up becoming friends with her stepsister as well as her sister's friends. So you kind of get to see that friend group form and there's this boy named Samson and her sister kind of tries to kind of like set them up but she's not really interested at first because he seems to be like very wealthy and like one of the rich kids. And she's like, I can't relate to you. So at first she's not interested, but then you see them start to have things in common. The relationship is just so cute. I love it. There's a Colleen Hoover plot twist in this book and I did not see it coming. I was actually very shocked. Overall, this was such a good book. I feel like all you need to know is that it's five out of five stars, amazing book. Please read it. <laughs> I was really enjoying Colleen Hoover's books. So I decided to read a second one. And this one is one of her pretty popular books and that is November 9. I gave this book like four, 4.5 out of five stars. It's not like my all time favorite by her, like Heartbones, but it was still very good. This book follows Fallon and Ben. They meet each other for the first time on November 9th and they really hit it off, but she's about to move across country, so they don't want to start anything up, but they decide that every year on November 9th, they'll meet up at the same place and just kind of catch up on the year and see each other. So that's the premise of this book. There are so many cute moments in this, so many emotional moments in this. There is another crazy plot twist in here that, like, I said this about the last book, but you cannot predict it. I definitely couldn't. It's a very good book. 4.5 out of 5 stars another one you have to read and i read another emily henry book i read her second book which is people we meet on vacation i also gave this book four out of five stars i really don't know whether i prefer people we meet on vacation or beach read i really enjoyed them both and my mind is constantly changing on which one i like better but this follows poppy and alex it is a friends to lovers second chance romance type thing it takes place in past and present perspective in the present perspective they have not talked in about two years and poppy's just really unhappy with her life and she realizes the last time that she was happy was when she was with alex on their last vacation because while they were in college they would go on an annual summer vacation every year with each other so she kind of 
convinces slash tricks him into taking another vacation with her and so that is the present perspective you get to see kind of the current trip that they're on and then in the past perspective you get to see all the trips they've taken in the past so it all kind of leads up to the moment where they stopped talking and in the whole book you're kind of trying to figure out why so yeah that's this book really good i liked it after that i read the deal which is the first book in the off-campus series the off-campus series is a series of like college hockey romance books and it follows four guys there are four like main books in the series the four main books follow the four different guys on the hockey team who are all roommates and it shows like each of their different romances. So The Deal is the first one in the series which is about Garrett and Hannah. The book was so good. I really liked it. I will say for sure this one definitely deals with some more sensitive topics. So I will say that. But for the most part these books are just like a really easy fun read. I love reading books where the characters are in college because that's my age group so I find them relatable in some ways and it's just like really fun to read. I definitely recommend this series. I loved it it was so fun to read but in july i only read the deals i really liked it i don't know why i didn't continue the series then i think i just had so many other books i wanted to read but yeah four to five stars really great book then i read second first impressions by sally thorne since i really enjoyed the hating game i decided to try out another one of her books and I gave this one three out of five stars, so it definitely was not my favorite, but it was still it was still good. I definitely enjoyed reading it, and it kept me entertained while I was reading. It's definitely nothing like I've ever read before. The one thing that really stands out in this book for me is like the side characters. The since they're all like older people who live in this retirement home, it's, it's definitely not something that you see in these types of books super often. So that was super fun and entertaining but it was just a cute little cute little read that is it for july now we're going into august which was a really good reading month starting off strong with it ends with us by colleen hoover i gave this book five stars this is probably one of her most popular books especially on book talk this book i really don't want to say too much about because i don't want to give spoilers but basically this follows lily at the beginning of this book lily has just moved to boston and she meets this guy named ryle and they hit it off and they kind of form a romance but she also runs into her first love who she met back in high school and so that kind of brings up old feelings from that relationship i wouldn't necessarily consider this book a love triangle because that's not the main point of this book and i feel like people have been saying that like the main point of this book is not the romance like yes there's definitely romance in this book but that's not the main point it's definitely more about like lily's growth and lily's story it's a very beautiful book and i definitely think everyone should read this again it deals with some heavier subjects so just be careful with that five out of five stars it's an emotional book but a good one and it's becoming a movie i'm so excited my friend and i were just talking about this because she read this book too and we just we can't wait for the movie to come out i really hope they do this book justice because of how much i love it all right my camera just died and so if the lighting or angle changed or anything that's why i had to let it charge for a bit the sun is also setting so if this lighting is not that great I apologize. <laughs> After that, I read Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid, and I gave this book 4.5 out of 5 stars, so I really liked it. This was not as much of a romance book as the other books I typically read are. There definitely is like romance subplots within this book, but it's more just a general like fiction type book. This book is another past present perspective. In the present, you see the four Riva siblings. The main character is Nina Riva and she hosts an annual party at her house in Malibu every year. The four siblings are very much in the public eye, so there's a lot of like famous people at this party, and so in the present perspective, you get to see hour by hour the day of the party. Some crazy stuff goes down, and there's just a lot, <laughs> so you get to see that. And then in the past perspective, you get to see their parents. So these four siblings, you get to see their parents, get to see their love story. My favorite thing about this was the characters, like the four siblings, I loved each one of them so much and I just got really invested in their lives. Then I read The Wall of Winnipeg and Me by Mariana Zapata. I just appreciate this book. Like, look at that. It's like over 600 pages. I, I loved it. Five out of five stars. This one I really did not expect to like so much. Like, I honestly kept putting it off. I heard so many good things about it and I was like, it's just like such a long book. Like, I don't know if I can get into it. I was so pleasantly surprised with this one and even though it's over 600 pages, once I got to the end, I didn't want it to end. I'm like, can I please keep reading about this couple? I love it so much. So this book follows 
Aiden and Vanessa. At the beginning of this book, Vanessa is Aiden's assistant. Aiden is a famous football player, but she's realizing that he treats her really poorly, and so she decides to not work for him anymore. She quits and leaves. But a little bit later, I think like a week or two later, he shows up at her doorstep and is asking her for a big favor. I'm not gonna say exactly what the favor is. I don't want to spoil anything, but it pretty much kind of leads them into the fake dating trope. She has to move back into his house. This kind of just follows their relationship. It's a very slow burn. It's definitely very grumpy sunshine, for sure, 100%. Aiden is very closed off, grumpy, doesn't really want to talk to anyone, even like interviews and stuff he doesn't want to do. Slowly over time, you see him start to open up to Vanessa and he just does like the cutest little gestures for her. I definitely want to read more of Mariana Zapata's books. This is the only one I've read but I definitely plan on reading more just because I loved this one so much. Let me know if you've read any of her other books, which one I should read next. This next book is the next one that is also in my top three for the year. I gave this book, of course, five out of five stars. And that is Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. I, I love this book so much. It's just like the most cute and cozy book you will ever read, in my opinion. This book follows Macy and Elliot. This is another one that's past present perspective. It is friends to lovers, second chance romance. So in the past, you get to see when Macy was super young. Her dad decides to buy them this like vacation house. And so they move in there and they go and visit it every so often. And her next door neighbor is a boy named Elliot. And when they meet, they're just kids. They're like super young and they bond over their love for reading. So of course, like I love when book characters love reading as well. So you get to see that and you get to see them grow up up until their senior year of high school and you get to see their friendship form in the present. It's been 10 years since they've spoken. They've not been in contact with each other for about 10 years and they accidentally run into each other. Of course, all those old feelings start to come back. And so you get to see their relationship and friendship kind of get built back up in the present. But the whole time you're trying to figure out the reasoning why they stopped talking and this that shocked me when I found out what happened. It was very emotional. I did not expect this to be an emotional book, but it was. I, I don't know. I just feel like this is the most amazing book <laughs> and five out of five stars. Like I said, it's in my top three of the year. You need to read this book. <laughs> so after that, I felt myself sort of slipping into a reading slump because I loved that book so much. I'm like, nothing will compare. So I decided to go back to the off-campus series and finish the series. So at the end of August, I read The Mistake, which is Logan and Grace's book. A lot of people actually say that that's their least favorite in the off-campus series, but I think it's actually my favorite in the series. I really, really liked their book. I loved them all, and I did give all the books four to five stars, but I feel like I might... Just love Logan and Grace a little bit more. I read The Mistake and then I read The Score, which was Dean and Ali's book, also super good. And then in September, I read The Goal, which is Tucker and Sabrina's book. Overall, like I said, the off-campus series, four out of five stars. I can definitely see myself rereading this series in the future. I definitely expect to read the Briar U series, which is the spin-off series. You get to see some of those characters within the off-campus books. So I'm really excited to see them in that spin-off series. It's definitely on my TBR for 2022. Overall, off campus series great so then i read the third book in my top three for the year another five star book and that is archer's voice by mia sheridan i was actually really surprised that i loved this book so much i just didn't think i would Maybe because i like i heard people say they liked it but i never really heard a ton about it and so i wasn't sure if i would like it but let me just say this book exceeded all expectations basically this book is about brie and archer at the beginning of this book brie moves into a new town and that is the town where archer lives but no one in the town it talks to Archer. No one interacts with him. They haven't for years. He's kind of seen as like this weird outsider that no one really bothers to know. People talk bad about him, but Brie ends up running into him a few times and she accidentally trusses on his property um, and they end up really starting to form a friendship. It really starts as that, as a friendship. No one has taken the time to get to know Archer until Brie and I just love his character so much. I feel like that's why I love the book so much because I love Archer. I This will forever be one of my favorite books. Then The Legacy came out, which is the fifth book in the off-campus series. It follows all four of the couples, but I think it's five years in the future. I gave this like three, 
three and a half out of five stars i did really enjoy it i just wish like i don't know like i wish it was longer and i wish i got to see more of each of the couples but i just still really enjoyed it because i got to be back in the universe there were again so many cute moments i just loved like the little inside jokes that they brought up from like the previous books in this even though i gave it three and a half out of five stars if you've read the series you will really enjoy this book now we're getting into october and these next three months are very sad because i was so busy with school i only read like one book in october and november so in october i read ugly love by colleen hoover so ugly love is one of colleen's most popular books i feel like it ends with us and ugly love are the two that i first heard of from her finally decided to read ugly love i gave it four out of five stars again it's another it's another emotional one colleen just knows how to write those emotional books but this book follows miles and tate this book starts off as tate is about to move into her brother's apartment she had to move to a new city for her job i think so she decides to move in with her brother and when she gets to his apartment there's this drunk guy on her doorstep she calls her brother turns out that guy is her brother's best friend who lives across the hall as time goes on since he is her brother's best friend they kind of get to know each other miles is very closed off he does not want a relationship because of past relationships he's been very hurt in the past so he's kind of very closed off does not want to open up to anyone so in this book you get the present perspective of miles and tate from tate's perspective then you also get miles perspective in the past when he's like back in high school and is previous relationship with Rachel who is kind of brought up throughout the book as well so this whole book is kind of pointing to an event that happened with Rachel and Miles in the past I'm trying to figure out what it is and again I could not like I literally did not think like how like I don't know I have no words I just could not predict what happened in that book it was very shocking very very sad that's Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover four out of five stars now we're in november and i read it happened one summer by tessa bailey I wrote down 4.5 out of five stars but i'm seriously considering giving it five stars because it was so good so i can't decide this is another one where i'm like 4.5 five stars basically this book follows piper she is a influencer very popular and she ends up getting into like a scandal at a party she ends up getting arrested her stepdad is fed up with her so he sends her away he sends her to this town where her parents grew up and her dad who has passed away lived there so she ends up going there when she's there she meets brendan they initially do not hit it off at all I mean, he's kind of annoyed by her definitely a grumpy sunshine then you see again their friendship form their relationship form i just really loved like the character development in this book for both of them like as separate individuals but then also like in their relationship now we are in december this is the last book that i've fully completed i'm in the middle of another book which i will talk about but this is the last book that i fully read and that is the love hypothesis by ali hazelwood this is definitely a five star book for me i really really liked this one this one has fake dating i feel like it's a top tier trope basically this book is about olive who's a third year phd student so one night olive told her best friend that she was going out on a date so that her best friend wouldn't feel bad about dating her ex so she told her best friend that she was going on a date she ends up going to the lab to do some work and she sees her best friend across the hall so she's like oh shoot i was supposed to be on a date like what is she gonna think when she sees me so she decides she's gonna kiss the first guy in the hall that she sees to make it look like she's on a date and that guy ends up being adam who is a professor at that school and he's known for being a very mean and harsh professor but they end up deciding to fake date to convince her best friend that she's over her ex so they decide to fake date he has some reasons for wanting to fake date as well so you get to see that one thing i loved about this book is that olive like reads romance books and watches romance movies so she's totally aware that she's in the trope which i find super funny it's just such a good book i love both of the characters super entertaining and fun it was just like a super like lighthearted and fun read so i definitely recommend this book now i'm just going to touch on the book i'm currently reading i am only halfway through it so i can't give my full-on opinion but i do plan on finishing it by the end of this year probably tonight honestly so I just wanted to share it and that is maybe someday by colleen hoover all right my camera died again and i really don't want to wait for it to charge so i'm just gonna record this on my phone i also never know where to look when i'm recording on my phone so sorry like i was saying the last book is the book i'm currently reading and that's maybe someday by colleen hoover this book is really good so far i'm a little over halfway done my favorite thing about this book is that there's an album that goes along with this book they both write songs in this book and they work on writing songs together and you can totally listen along to the songs as you're reading them which i love but i can't really give a full synopsis on this book because i'm still reading it so that is that book that's the end of this video sorry if it was a little all over the place my camera kept dying <laughs> i shouldn't have charged it more but i wanted to finish this before the sun sets so 
that is the end of this video let me know any book recommendations you have below if you want to talk about any of these books i read comment down below too we can do that thank you for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye guys